I stabbed him. I stabbed Maurice in his side. I drove on him. I ran him over. Ladies and gentlemen, these are quotes from someone involved in this case, but these are not quotes from Bryce Rhodes. These statements were made by Ann Juan Carter. Ann Juan Carter talked <coughs> about killing his best friend, Maurice Gordon, and running over a helpless Christopher Jones. Ann Juan Carter is the prosecution's main witness in this trial. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm so glad that you're here. I'm thankful that you're here. I know Bryce is also grateful that you are here because he has waited a long time for you all to hear the evidence. The evidence, or the lack thereof, will show you that Bryce Rhodes is not guilty of these accusations. The burden of proof being beyond a reasonable doubt, why do we keep talking about that? I know you've heard that many times already. Our system, our government, makes it so difficult to take someone's freedom that we can't let the government make any mistakes. And we want to be sure that no one is ever wrongfully convicted, especially in a situation where the stakes are this high. The government has made some very serious accusations against Bryce. And I'm not here to undermine the loss that the families and the community have suffered as a result of these senseless, senseless deaths. But I'm here to make sure that nobody is wrongfully convicted and that's why you are here. As jurors in this case, you guys have a great responsibility. But with that responsibility also comes a great power. You all have the power to hold the government to their burden of proving Bryce Rhodes guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. You have the power to say no. You have the power to say we are not convinced. And the power to know that that decision is okay. So how do you make that decision? As Ms. Jones Brown told you earlier, none of us can define reasonable doubt for you. That's up to you as a juror. That's up to you as an individual. So what are you going to use to make this determination? You will hear evidence over the next several days. You will decide what evidence you find credible, what witnesses you find believable. So what evidence do you all expect to see to help you make this decision? It's a very important decision. Eyewitnesses, that might be good. I think you'll find that there aren't any eyewitnesses who were not themselves involved in these crimes. There are no neutral witnesses. Do these witnesses have a motive to lie? Can we trust them? You might expect to see a murder weapon. There's not one. Is there physical evidence? Yes. Can it be trusted? That's up to you all to decide. Let's talk about the physical evidence. The Louisville Metro Police Department found tire tracks and footprints at the scene where Larry and Maurice's bodies were found. The tire tracks could not be linked to Bryce's vehicle. The footprints did not match Bryce's shoes. Bryce's fingerprints were not on any evidence. Bryce Rhodes' DNA was not found on any evidence except for on the steering wheel and the gear shift of his own vehicle. Let's talk about Bryce's car. The Commonwealth showed you a picture of the Mazda. Louisville Metro Police Department 
searches Bryce's car and claims that the entire back seat of Bryce's light blue Mazda had been removed in an effort to conceal evidence of these crimes. No DNA linking Bryce to those crimes was recovered in that car. You'll hear that Bryce borrowed Chris Jensen's black charger to drive these boys around. And when you hear from Mr. Jensen, note that he is not going to be able to say that anyone was with Bryce when he picked up that black charger, nor was anyone with Bryce when he dropped off that black charger to Mr. Jensen. These are things to consider. I want to give you an alternate perspective, if you will, than what the government has. Have they accused the right person or was Bryce an easy target to blame? Has the one who already committed these crimes pled guilty? I ask you all to listen to the evidence, observe the witnesses, and ask yourselves if something isn't quite right here. The evidence will show that there is a reasonable doubt that Bryce Rhodes is guilty. Let's talk about the detectives in this case. As you all know, the Louisville Metro Police Department um, was the agency responsible for investigating both of these um, murders, both, both scenes, or, or excuse me, both incidents on May 4th and then again on May 22nd. And there were two lead detectives, as the Commonwealth told you, Detective Griffin and Detective Tonelli, and you'll hear from both of them. But I want you to think about how many hands were involved in this case. When it comes to, to handling evidence, interviewing witnesses, executing search warrants, mistakes were made. And I want you to think, can we rely on every person that works for the Louisville Metro Police Department? You will learn that the Metro Louisville Metro Police Department investigated these homicides, and once again, this is the same force that murdered Breonna Taylor. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point in the case, there has not been any evidence presented that links any information in this case to the case of Breonna Taylor. I'm going to admonish you to disregard counsel's last statement at this point. Ladies and gentlemen, even if you find Detective Tonelli and Detective Griffin, the two lead detectives in this case, as I mentioned, there were so many hands in this case. Can you rely on everyone else 
that works for local Metro Police Department. Detective Tonelli lied under oath about one of the biggest pieces of physical evidence that the police possessed. He told the court under oath not once but twice that law enforcement had a piece of evidence that they did not have and do not have. So you might be asking yourself, I can, I can see how some evidence could be lost. Maybe it was a tiny piece of hair. Maybe it was a, a speck of DNA. That seems reasonable. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, no. It was an entire back seat of a car. It's gone. You know how I told you earlier that, that Bryce's, the police stated that Bryce's back seat had been removed. Detective Tonelli told a judge and then a grand jury that the Louisville Metro Police Department had found and collected a burnt back seat from a dumpster that matched Bryce Rhodes's back seat. And now it's gone. I am mystified as to how you lose a piece of evidence that big It's huge. It's a huge piece of evidence, not only physically, but, but to the case as well. So in an effort to get Bryce charged, the court was misled, the grand jury was misled about a piece of evidence in the LMPD's possession. Did they lie under oath about having it? Or did they dispose of it because it didn't help their case? You all decide that. The Louisville Metro Police Department searched the home of Bryce's mother where he was residing on Hyde Avenue in Louisville two times. The first search, officers found nothing incriminating. They even commented on how clean the apartment was. The crime scene unit was there, detectives were there, officers were there. It was a big search. Nothing. Nothing was found. And then they decide to just go back. The officers go back, decide to search the home again, and now claim that they have found evidence that Larry and Maurice were killed there. Now there's suddenly blood there. First of all, is that how search warrants work? You keep going back until you find something, and if you don't find anything, you find a way to come back and find something. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again, huh? But that's not how search warrants work, ladies and gentlemen. Despite all of those officers being there, I've never seen a video recording of the search at Hyde Avenue. There's nothing for you all to watch to see what actually happened. I want you to consider that when you hear about how the evidence was collected. Consider that reasonable doubt as to the guilt of Mr. Rhodes. I want to talk to you all about the investigation in this case or, or the lack thereof. <coughs> I think it's fair to say that, that you all could conclude that the police had tunnel vision in this case. And when I say tunnel vision, I mean that they focused in on Bryce Rhodes, excluding all other possible suspects. Elizabeth Wren, the mother of Larry and Maurice, was the first to point the finger at Bryce Rhodes. But why? She didn't see anything. So what was her problem with Bryce? Was it their romantic relationship had gone bad? I feel for her. She lost both of her sons. She's a grieving mother, and you will see that when she testifies. But I'm going to ask you to look past that and think about the part that she played in this. Consider the reliability of her statement. Evidence will show that she is a known drug user who was aware that her juvenile sons were hanging with Ja'Cory Taylor and Anwan Carter, were involved with guns, and even knew her son's friends bought a gun out of her own home. She was naturally distraught when she spoke to the police, 
but also very likely under the influence. And I'm not saying that to speak ill of her, but as a jury, you have to know that the police took her statement and did not investigate anyone else. The police didn't care that she hated Bryce. The police didn't care that they had a relationship that went sour. The police didn't care that she hadn't actually seen anything. They already had a name and she was happy to trash her ex-boyfriend. Ladies and gentlemen, no other suspects were investigated. Not a full investigation was done, as you might expect to see in a case of this magnitude. There were, however, however other suspects to investigate. Just prior to the shooting of Christopher Jones, a Louisville Metro police officer reported a suspect in a white shirt, excuse me, reported receiving a report of a suspect in a white shirt riding a bicycle and waving a gun around in the area. This is not a coincidence. It's a high crime area. It wasn't investigated. Another witness reported seeing a black Chrysler 300M near the scene of Christopher Jones's death and even stated a person got out and messed with the body but then fled before the police arrived. This was not investigated. Another possible suspect comes to light in the statements of Anwan Carter and Ja'Cory Taylor. They both described two other men being present at and participating in the, brother, in the murder of brothers Larry and Maurice. Tyrion Coleman was eventually charged and convicted. However, the other, the other individual was not charged or even questioned. There is a reasonable doubt that Bryce Rhodes is guilty. There's no clear motive for Bryce to have committed these crimes. The police allege that Bryce Rhodes shot and killed Christopher Jones in the presence of Ja'Cory Taylor and Juan Carter Larry Ordway, and Maurice Gordon. And then about three weeks later, the police think that Bryce stabbed Larry and Maurice because Bryce was afraid they would go to the police and rat. But the other two who were present are still alive. Anne Car Carter and Ja'Cory Taylor were there and they are still alive. Does this make sense to you? And I would like to talk about those co-defendants. I stabbed him. I stabbed Maurice in his side. I drove on him. I ran him over. And one Carter was facing life in prison for his actions against three innocent people. He was facing life in prison. And the prosecution said, that's okay, we'll give you probation, but to, give the, but to get the sweetheart offer, you've got to give us someone else. And Juan Carter pled guilty to the murders of Christopher Jones, Maurice Gordon, Larry Ordway, and in exchange for that, the prosecution was okay with probation, or maybe a little prison, left it up to the judge, if you testify against Bryce Rhodes. And one Carter gave a name, the police took it and ran with it. Up to that point, all they had was kids killing other kids. They wanted an adult to stick it to. And here we are. Two people have already admitted to killing Christopher Jones. And one Carter and Ja'Cory Taylor. Three people have already admitted to killing Larry Ordway and Maurice Gordon. Again, and one Carter and Ja'Cory Taylor plus Tyron Coleman. They have all pled guilty to their murders. So why are we here then? 
Because in order for those men to get very lenient deals from the government, they agreed to testify against Bryce. The evidence will show you all that those responsible for the murders have already been convicted and are now trying to put the blame on Bryce Rhodes. There's reasonable doubt that Bryce Rhodes is guilty. The evidence will show that the testimony of Ann Juan Carter and Ja'Cory Taylor, who you will hear from, is not believable. Both of these men are known criminals. In fact, Ann Juan Carter is currently in prison right now in the state of Florida. Guess what for? Gun charges. He had a loaded weapon on him. So after he got his sweetheart deal here in Kentucky for killing three people, he went to the state of Florida, joined a gang, and again got arrested. He changed his statement at least three times to the police that I can think of. At first, Mr. Carter even told police, I do not know Bryce Rhodes. I've never been in a car with him. However, after having time to consult with Ja'Cory Taylor, a plan was concocted to point the finger at Bryce Rhodes. These two, Taylor and, and Carter, had a chance to get their stories together. There weren't any suspects initially after the Christopher Jones murder but about three weeks later, Larry and Maurice are killed. And one Carter wasn't questioned until about two days after that incident. So all of this time, Carter and Taylor had time to get their story straight, to come up with a plan of how to get themselves out of this, a plan to make themselves look less guilty for murdering their best friends, Larry and Maurice a plan to blame Bryce. Ann Juan Carter admitting, admitted to running over Christopher Jones's body in a pickup truck that he had stolen, that Mr. Carter had stolen. Do you know what kind of vehicle witness, witnesses reported seeing at the scene where Larry and Maurice's bodies were recovered? A pickup truck, not Bryce's blue Mazda. <coughs> and one Carter admitted to stabbing his best friend Maurice Gordon. Carter claims to have seen Bryce Rhodes shoot Christopher Jones, but the evidence will show that what Anne one Carter in fact saw was a hand out the window shooting a gun. If you recall, Mr. Carter was in the vehicle behind where the shots were fired, the vehicle that the shots were fired from. It was dark outside, and Carter could not see the face of the shooter. Ja'Cory Taylor was in the back seat where the shots were fired and had just bought a gun from the boyfriend of Larry and Maurice's mother. And one Carter saw Ja'Cory Taylor buy the gun. There's reasonable doubt that Bryce Rhodes is guilty. Corey Taylor admitted to buying that gun right before the shooting of Christopher Jones. He admitted to getting into an altercation with Maurice Gordon right before Maurice died. He admitted that Maurice Gordon pulled a knife on him. And then he admitted to stabbing Larry. Again, reasonable doubt. At the conclusion of the evidence, you will be asked to make a decision about Bryce's fate. You have promised that in order to find anyone guilty, the government has first proven to you that that person is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. If the government has not done that, you all must find him not guilty. I stabbed him. I stabbed Maurice in his side. I drove on him. I ran him over. You all get to decide what is true, who you believe, and what is reliable. I ask you to use your power as jurors to tell the government you are not convinced 
tell them that the evidence is not sufficient and tell them that we will not wrongfully convict Bryce. Thank you.